Hello. I'm so happy to be here in Barcelona. Um, it was about six months ago I was uh, on a stage just like this announcing the acquisition for Heptio into VMware. And, uh, but I, I actually feel more, uh, uh, more at home here with KubeCon. Uh, so we're going to be talking about cluster API and really uh, you know, improving the story for how we launch and manage clusters, but doing it in an upstream way. All right, so let's start with KubeUp. Uh, folks who've been with the project for a long time probably have nightmares about this. It's still in there in the lizard brain. Folks used to launch clusters using this, uh, and it's been there ever since the, the first commit uh, for Kubernetes. Um, this is an example of how we like, severely, severely underestimated the difficulty of launching and managing clusters. Uh, it worked kind of early on, but it was pretty clear that it didn't work well because we saw an explosion of installers uh, across, uh, across the project as Kubernetes started getting popular and we started seeing adoption. And uh, the problem with this explosion of, of installers is that each of them was vertically integrated. It was a certain way of launching Kubernetes, a certain way of managing Kubernetes in a cer certain environment. And so each of these individual installers really had a bunch of opinions at each of those different levels. And what it meant is that if your needs happened to align with the exact sort of, you know, choices that that installer made and the, the exact sort of dependencies, you were in good shape. Uh, but if it didn't, then, uh, you know, tough luck, you were, uh, you were doing it the hard way. So we attack this the way that we attack a lot of things in Kubernetes with, with layering. And so the first thing that we did is we created this project called kubeadm, uh, kubeadmin, I don't know, people say it different ways, you know, another Kubernetes tradition. And, and the idea with kubeadmin was, you know, we assume that you have a set of computers. We don't care how you got them, whether you stole them or launched them on a cloud or both. Um, and then you, you, once you have these computers and have a certain level of prerequisites installed on them, you can then bootstrap a cluster from there. And so we decided not to solve the entire problem with kubeadmin, but only this slice of like once you actually have things provisioned. And it's actually been working out really well. We built it as a toolkit, and we're starting to see that code either directly or indirectly end up in a bunch of different projects, a bunch of different installers. What we're doing now is actually attacking the next layer down. This is that provisioning. How do you get the machines that you're actually going to be running these things on top of? And this is through a project that's called Cluster API. And we're going beyond this. We're actually using Kubernetes to manage Kubernetes. We're using the API patterns, the control patterns that have proven so well for managing things like pods, for managing machines as they run on top of, uh, on top of clouds and other API-driven infrastructure. All right, so this is actually a grassroots community effort. So this is a photo, and it's a, it's a, it's a tweet from Lucas, who uh, gave one of the keynotes this morning. Um, where a bunch of folks, uh, 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 Chris Nova was leading a spontaneous Kubernetes sort of meetup. This was at the tail end of KubeCon in, uh, in Copenhagen. And it was really great to see so many people at the end of the conference when everybody just wants to get home, uh, so excited about this technology coming together to really discuss what we can actually do as a community. So actually, I love this photo. All right. so. Um, yeah, slides didn't get updated. There's supposed to be a transparent background there. Um, so what is Cluster API? So there's, there's four sort of main resources. These are uh, custom resource definitions, CRD. So they're extending Kubernetes. Um, and first of all, we start with a cluster, a declarative idea of what you want your cluster to be. And then on top of that, or underneath that, we actually have a set of resources for managing machines. The first thing we have is a machine. And so if you create a machine, there's a controller that we call a provider that then goes ahead, takes that machine, and calls whatever API is necessary to be able to actually instantiate a, instantiate a VM. So this is a semi-standardized way to be able to actually automate the underlying cloud or API-driven infrastructure. The, uh, uh, and then just like we have pods and replica sets, we have machines and machine sets. Machine sets actually deal with replicating these things so that you can actually expand and contract, manage node pools, do auto scaling, that type of thing. And then finally, as we look at not just day one, but day two of uh, cluster management, you have to think about how do I upgrade my machines? And that's where machine deployment comes into play. All right. So you might think, hey, that all sounds great, but how do you run a Kubernetes when you don't have a Kubernetes? 
right? Like we got to, you know, these things are layered and we're using these patterns. How do you actually sort of bootstrap this stuff up? How do you get to the point where you can actually run all that stuff that I just talked about? Well, there's two different models that folks generally use, and one of them's easier than the other. Than the, other. Uh, the first model is that you have some cluster that maybe it's a managed cluster, maybe it's something that you're doing in a, in a more manual way that actually runs all the cluster API components, and then it goes ahead and it manages uh, essentially child clusters. And this is actually a pretty, pretty common pattern. And it's the easiest to wrap your head around. Uh, but there's another pattern, this is something that's a little bit more challenging and it's actually going to come later in the project, is uh, essentially self-hosting. Where you use something like a mini cube to get the cluster up and running. Once the cluster is running, you essentially pivot all the cluster API stuff from running on mini cube to actually running on the cluster that's actually managing itself. All right, so hopefully that whets your appetite. This is super early technology. We're at a V1 Alpha 1, but we got that out and we're really excited about it. Lots of really great discussions going on in terms of what this is going to look like in the future. And, uh, and hopefully we can really democratize how we actually build and manage clusters for everybody. Please come join us. Uh, SIG Cluster Lifecycle is where all the action's at. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you. Thank you.